Hello, welcome back everyone. Um, this is the second video of the presentation about bats and uh, Nicaragua and I I just want to focus on this one and exp um, show you a bit of the diversity of species that we have in the country. I was very lucky to be born in a country with such bad diversity so it's a real pressure pleasure to to work with them. Um, Nicaragua is the most diverse per area country in the world um, regarding to bat genera. Right now we have about 111 species of bats and when Carol Chambers and I started working in the country in 2011 we only know knew about 99 species and those 12 new species have been found for uh, oh by by us and other colleagues so it has been really fun um, bats are about 55 percent of all the species of mammals of the country and uh, which are about 215 species and it's this huge diversity of uh, bats that makes them play a lot of roles in the ecosystem and they have a huge diversity of diets and behavior. Just to put a bit of context, the whole United States have about 50 species of bats and Nicaragua is about one third the size of Arizona. So it's inc incredibly diverse in a really small area. I just want to make clear that we all know what's a bat. And there are an order of mammals. Uh, this order is called Chiroptera, which basically means that the wings form by the hand. Um, these are the only real flying mammals like you know sometimes people talk about like flying squirrels and um, other animals like can glide but these are the bats are the only ones that can really take off and power their flight um, they are their main characteristics is a presence of a uh, patagium, which is the name of that skin, be the membrane that's used to fly. And in bats, is usually the one between the fingers and from the arm to the side of their bodies. Many bats t t also have uh, uh, patagium between the legs. Um, that one we call it Europatagian. And in the American continent, all species of bats um, use echolocation. And if you remember, maybe from some biology classes, echolocation is a, is a type of sonar where an animal produces sound and uses the the bounce of that sound to have an idea about what's in their way and how close or far objects are. Um, this, this used to be um, all species of bats used to be divided into two suborders. Now they have like new names based on genetics, but. Um, in generally speaking, there are microchiroptera and there's megachiroptera. And megachiroptera are the flying foxes, and we only find those in Australia, Asia, and Africa, but um, some parts of South Europe too. But in America, we only have the microchiroptera. And some can be still like three feet of wingspan, but relative to the flying foxes that can be six feet of wingspan, they they are quite small. 
In fact, in Nicaragua, the smallest species of bat, this little yellow bat, uh, weighs about the same as a penny, three grams to four grams. It's, it's really tiny. So I would like to go really quick through the different families of bats. In Nicaragua, we have nine families, and there are a lot of diversity within each family but also they have some things in things in common so I just wanna um, show you what are the main um, things about each of them the first family is gonna be the Mbalonuridae and these are known as the sack wing bats and this actually refers to the fact that many species have small sacs in that membrane of the wings and they use these sacs to put saliva and um, fecal material and urine <laughs> and to produce some smelly substance that help them to um, to mate to attract a uh, female so males are usually have these bags uh, or these sacks uh, more developed than females in Nicaragua we have about 10 species they are all insectivores and they have this uh, resting position with the head facing down but also kind of like sticking out of the surface where they are perching they usually don't just completely hang out of the ceilings they kind of they tend to like more like hanging from from a wall like in these ones on the pictures some of these are also called dog like fa dog like face bats because they some of them kind of look like a small dog. Another family is the Noctilionidae, and these are the fishing bats or the bulldog face bat. Again, people, a lot of people think that they look like some kinds of dogs, so these ones kind of look like a bulldog, I guess. These are relatively big, and the name fishing bat it is because they actually can fish they're they're like small eagles and they have these huge claws that can pick up a a small fish out of the water and remember these are nocturnal animals so they do all of that um, in completely darkness relying only in the echolocation to discern where a fish is under the water so it, it's it's really incredible we um, we have two species and there are only two species in that family in the world so it's pretty cool our third family is the Philostomidae and these are known as the nose leaf bats and if you see they have this um, characteristic pointy nose and this is basically just a, a small piece of skin and flesh and it helped them produce some sounds for the echolocations and these, this structure in the nose is called a, a, a nose leaf and this group is the most diverse. The smallest in this group are 4 grams, which is about the weight of a penny. And the largest bat is about 235 grams, which is basically a, um, half a pound. So it's really big. Um, there are about 58 species in Nicaragua and they are so diverse that we divide them in subfamilies and we're gonna go through each of those subfamilies. 
and they basically eat anything you can imagine a bat can do. The first family of Philostomidae are the Philostomini, and these are the gleaning and carnivorous bats. These also include the largest bat in the American continent, and and also includes the smallest one. There is about 19 species in Nicaragua and they are called carnivorous because they actually feed on other animals. Um, the small ones feed on little insects while the bigger ones eat frogs, birds, lizards, other bats, basically anything that they can catch. Our subfamily is the Glossophagine and these are the nectar feeding bats and these are basically the hummingbirds of the bat world. They are relatively small with the largest species only weighing 20 grams and we have eight species. You can see this one in the middle, the yellow one. It's, it, it real color is like brown but all that yellow is basically pollen from from the flowers that they visit. They all have this long snout and very long uh, tongues that can be as long as their own body. Another subfamily is the short tail bats and the name is because they truly have like a really short tail. Usually you can in some of the species you cannot even see it. We have four species of these in the picture on the very right you can see a mother holding its baby and they fly they they are amazing flying with these huge babies and sometimes you catch them on the nets and you have the two bats per one <laughs> um, these animals are really good in disturbed areas because they really like plants that are early successional. So um, every time the forest gets fragmented, you will capture a lot or a lot more of these. Another subfamily is Stenodermatine, and these are the tailless fruit eating bats. So the other ones were the short tail. These ones completely lack tails. And most of these, uh, or basically all of them, feed on fruits. We have 21 species, including this wrinkled face bat here on the left. Isn't that like super interesting and cute? And it also includes the, the chocolate bat and the Jamaican fruit eating bat and the little Honduran white bat which is super cute tiny species uh, while the other ones are way bigger. Finally the last uh, subfamily of Philostomidae are the vampire bats. Um, but Real vampires exist and there are three species in the world and in Nicaragua we have all of them. The common vampire bat is the one on the right, in the very right, and is the one that usually preys on mammals. The other two species are way more rare and they feed on blood of um, birds. They are relatively medium size. They are not the largest nor the smallest of all the species. And they are really good at walking. Um, by walking I mean like just moving in the ground. Remember that their wings are made out of their hands. So most bats are not really good, but um, vampire bats have really long thumbs that they use like, like feet. To, to walk and I'm gonna talk a bit more about vampire bats because I think they're really cool and most people usually have a lot of questions about this and I just want to point that in natural conditions they are really rare species but 
once humans put a lot of cows in the landscape you're basically providing food for them so they they become a lot more abundant um, as I say two species are more special specialized on bird blood one is the one that have issues with domestic animals um, also they are highly sociable and they don't bite instead they make a cut not using the canines but the incisors and they have a small sensors in the in near their mouth that can help them detect where the veins and the blood of the animals are close to the surface so the cut is a lot more efficient and from there they just lick the blood out of the animal and several animals can feed on the same cut also I mentioned that they were really good walking and that's because they need to approach the prey when it, when it's sleeping so it's not like they're gonna just go and jump on the prey and and, and 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 suck the blood or anything they need to approach carefully uh, another thing is many bats can live up to 20 years or more so for an animal that size, they have really long lives. Another family is a funnel ear bat, Natalidae. We only have two species. And in this photo, you may ask, oh, what's going on in his eye? And the thing is that when they, are, they feel threatened, they can hide the eye inside their, their skull, kind of. I don't know how to explain that but they basically hide the eye inside the cavity so they kind of look like they don't have an eye but it's just really bizarre and in the other photo you can see a bunch uh, a bunch of those animals and of different colors it's just really they're all the same species but they have all this color variation which is it's just really nice to see We have a species of thumbless bat. These are very poorly known species, tiny, really hard to catch. We really don't know much about this and other than they live in really dense forests and they are great flyers. Um, another one is the Tyroptera and this is another of those bizarre bats. This one has suction cups in their wings basically in their wrist and in their ankles and if you put them in a, gl in a glass they, they can walk on glass but they they have this adaptation so they can they can sleep inside roll banana leaves and these are the only bats that actually rest with the head uh, up instead of hanging down. Another family is the Vespertilionids. These planos bats or Vespertine bats which means they come out of in the late afternoon and still with some most of them when there's still some light. Uh, this is a incredibly diverse family especially in temperate areas but in Nicaragua we have about 16 species. I think Arizona has about the same number of species of this family and things like the big brown bats and spotted bat here in Arizona belongs to the same family. Um, they are all insectivores and they are small to medium size. Finally we have the Molossids which are the free tail bats and they have this name because they have a long tail sticking out kind of like sometimes they they kind of look like a mouse tail um, these are fast flyers they can fly up to two miles above ground they they can fly over a hundred miles per day they are just incredibly animals and some of them just look really cute like 
I don't know. I I really I really love their their faces. They are all insectivores. And just to make clear, we talk about vampire bats, and those are the only one that will ever feed on blood. And actually, that's the only thing they can feed on. All these other animals have very specialized diets. And with that, I I want to finish this second part. Um, and the third one, we're gonna talk about what what I'm doing for my PhD. So I hope you enjoy it. Um, thank you very much. I would like to invite you to watch this short video. Um, it's about a minute long, and it's just a slow motion release footage of some species of bats that we caught in 2017. I think it's really fun, and you can see the difference in size of all these species from tiny bats of which weight is about four grams to the largest species that we have so yeah take a look if you have a phone you can just use the qr code 